Book Festival, and welcome to the inside of our rocket ship. We are currently uh, in outer space, rotating around the Earth uh, with our brand new book, Astronauts Mission to the Water Planet. So if there's any technical difficulties, don't worry about it. It's us in space. It's a solar flare or space trash? Yeah. Don't call don't call names. That's not nice. <laughs> okay. Well, well, I'm John Sheska. I'm Steven Weinberg. Um, I'm the National Ambassador of Young People's Literature, the first one from a few years back. Uh, and I'm Steven Weinberg. No, no more stuff. <laughs> yeah. That, well, he's the co-pilot. He's the illustrator. He's got a lot of stuff going. Uh, and we are here today to tell you about Book Two of the Astronauts. Yeah. Which is oh. And as you know, uh, I'm sure you have book one and you've read the whole thing, but just to remind you, it's a secret NASA program. That's NASA with the extra N. Important distinction. Standing for not NASA, um, which is four super powered animals that were built by NASA to look for a Goldilocks planet if things got too bad on Earth. Yeah, it's a good, uh, oh boy. <laughs> we have a something else. There must be a space dog. I think that's our space dog barking. Yeah. <laughs> you happen to hear that. <laughs> yeah, their mission is to find a new planet if we need to move somewhere else because there's a climate crisis going on. And that's a really big part of these books. As you know, like things are getting hot, icebergs are melting, seas are rising, animals are dying. So the scientists at NASA thought maybe if we look for another planet that's not too cold, not too cold. Not too hot, but just right. That's the Goldilocks one. Yeah, and that's what they're doing. And the astronauts are a couple mutants ready to travel into space. Oh, and the best part is these guys have superpowers. Though, actually, I, sh I should probably tell you the best part of these books is that they look crazy and they're insane. That's a nice, nice version of insane. Yeah, <laughs> a nice version of insane. <laughs> so, all the art in this book, I'm the illustrator, John wrote all the words. Um, I collage from art all over the world. Um, everything you see here are engravings that I've recolored. They are made into sunsets for other planets. I even take paintings. This is in book two from very famous painters <laughs> like Clambrandt. You might recognize it, all you Rembrandt fans. But I think my other favorite part of the book um, since every book, there's going to be three all together, and the astronauts go to different planets to look for just the right planet. So book one was they went to the plant planet. Book two is the water planet. And book three is going to be the perfect planet. Which we, we can't but, talk about too much. Right no, that's very top secret. But my other favorite part in the book is the beginning of every book you can actually read in like five seconds. Should we, should we do it? I think we should do it. Okay. Because we have a great, and it's some great writing. <clears throat> Very it good goes writing. like this. Five, four, three, three two, two, one. Blast off! And uh, the astronaut's secret lab is behind the heads in Mount Rushmore. Yeah. So their rocket is the Thomas Jefferson nose rocket. Yeah. Just, it gets you into outer space quite quickly. It's, it's plain as the nose on someone's face. <laughs> so let's talk a bit more about book two, which is coming out yeah. very soon. Yeah. In fact, this gets very exciting because uh, in book one, the astronauts found a pretty good looking planet. Uh, but it turns out plants were in charge of everything. And they had kind of gotten a little carried away, just like humans have gotten carried away here. And they kind of messed everything up. Yeah. They killed the fish. They killed the birds. They killed everything. Each book has a big fold out. What? Ooh. At no extra cost. At no extra cost. <laughs> you so get a full battle. They didn't go too well with the plant planet. So in book two, they go to the water planet. Yeah, because they got to find another planet. That one didn't work out. So they got one more shot. They figured, let's go look at this planet. It sounds good. It, it's a lot of water, which we need for life. And the other sneaky feature of these astronauts is they each have a secret power. Or I guess it's not so secret, but it's super. It's very super and no longer a secret. There's Alpha Wolf, who's the mission leader. His, uh, besides having super strong claws, he also is super bossy. Uh, super hearing, super silky fur, and he's very super bossy. Smart Hawk. 
super dark energy tornadoes come out of her wings. And she is the best planner ever, which you really need on a mission. Yeah. Then there's Laser Shark, who's kind of the uh, nurse, cook, big protector. She's tough. Yeah, and security officer. Security officer. She can levitate with her electromagnetism, shoot bolts out of her tail, which is handy later, but also dangerous. And then Stinkbug probably has one of the most... Um, uh, noticeable powers. Noticeable powers. I was looking yeah. for the right word. Besides being able to jump really high, Stinkbug does something that is quite stinky. He leaks gas. Methane. Especially when he gets nervous. Yeah, yeah it smells quite so. bad. And it's quite flammable. But each... Each astronaut has a specific job when they go to a planet. Yes. So Alpha Wolf is looking for intelligent life. Smart Hawk is looking at the environment. Laser Shark wants to make sure that there's water. Because as we said, like you got to have water. Yeah. For and you mentioned Stinkbug wants to find building materials. He's looking for shelter. Yeah. Uh, so book one, Plant Planet doesn't work out too good. Thank goodness. Now we're going to the water planet. We have another planet. And it looks great. Looks great. They are welcomed by the inhabitants of the water planet, the clams. Turns out clams have dominated this planet and taken yeah. over everything too. They seem really friendly. They're led by a clam named P.T. Clam. P.T. Clam Barnum. He's great. You might not want to trust everything he says. Oh, I don't know. He said, look at this great planet. You guys might want this. You might want it. <laughs> we have so much to offer. Uh, he shows up with a bunch of his friends from the Clam Senate. The Clam Senators also have... Uh... Don't trust everything they say. Yeah. I don't know. What are you talking about, Clam you McConnell? About Why would you not trust Clam McConnell? Clam McConnell and the Clam Brothers. Or Clam David H. Clam and Charles G. Clam. Yeah. I Cornelius Clamderbilt? I don't know. There's some common theme with all of them. Hmm. Well, they've taken over the planet and they're trying to sell it hard. They're saying, like, yep, this is a great planet. You guys take this one, we'll take Earth. Yeah. But um, things get a little interesting. Yeah. As they look under the hood of the planet, so to speak, <laughs> as they meet the clam resistance led by Susan B. Clampton. Who tells them, you know what? Things are not so great there on are the water like planet. The land they promise are actually giant islands of plastic bags. Turns out it's kind of polluted and there doesn't appear to be a lot of land. And it kind of appears like maybe this is not such a great deal. But Alpha Wolf is sold. He still wants he it. He loves it. He, he's getting buttered up. <laughs> he's getting offers. Um, so the guys have, uh, once again, there's massive fights. That's the special thing we love about astronauts. Every planet they go to, they get into a lot of battles. This is a, a large aquatic battle. Yeah. With a fold out as well. We can't show you oh. in this version, but it also folds out all the way. With all of the sea monsters. Yeah. Which we have to show off sea monster by sea monster because there are so many <laughs> you want to read some of them john yeah this is kind of one of another one of our favorite kind of things we get to do is just go into every sea monster like collect them all how about operation scary mutant sea monsters right here with the hell cootie Ooh, rains fire and brimstone has a weakness of angel food cake <laughs> what who wrote that this is the Hydra! <laughs> it has seven times bad breath and seven times the headaches. Here's Jonah's worst nightmare. Swallows anything whole. And it's only mutant weaknesses Sunday school. So another one of our favorite parts of Astronauts is the narrator. I and mean, there's only can be I one I promise narrator, you're right? going to love this narrator. Yeah. I love the narrator. She's kind of the smartest. She's yeah. been around for eh, billions of years. She's everywhere you look. Earth. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, of course she would tell the story, right? She's not too happy because things have not been going well. Very concerned about the state of the environment. Yeah. And in fact, so she's the one who always kicks off the book and said, oh, great. Blast off. Here we go. It's supposed to be exciting, but it's not. It's because I'm falling apart. You humans are killing me. <laughs> so throughout the book, she gets to kind of make fun of everybody and say, oh, come on. Like, yeah, go find another planet, please. You guys are bugging me. Just give me a break. But man, is, how great is that? Earth, our narrative. You got it. Um, there's not much of a segue for this, but I realize we need to talk about it because we're talking digitally through DC. We've gotten to work with the Smithsonian these books well yeah that's part of the artwork that steven does maybe that's our, our segue 
Uh, all of Stephen's artwork, he has assembled from other places like the Dutch National Museum. Yeah, and using the Smithsonian's artwork for the third book, which is yeah. just wild to get to use. And we've done a whole project with the Smithsonian to use all of their public domain art that they put out. This past and it's year. something you can do too. Yeah, so if you go to our website, astronauts.space, you can download this booklet as an ebook and learn about how to make your own collagesaurus. So the astronauts go to the Smithsonian and they meet the ghost of James Smithson, the man who started all the Smithsonian rest the restaurants, the guy who started all the all Smithsonian. of the snacks and like and the snacks. Our restaurants as the Smithsonian. <laughs> it's true. They're quite nice. Every one of those museums started with this guy who yeah. gave his money. And so we've used stuff from all the different museums, and the astronauts have created a collagesaurus. Yeah, one of the big things we try to stress with this whole series is there's a gigantic climate crisis happening, and we need every tool in the toolbox to fix it. Yeah. So when making the art, I wanted to use every bit of art I could. Because, I mean, I can, I can draw things pretty well. Very well. Are you kidding? Look at Steven's art. But I'd rather use a, a shark someone else did. <laughs> it's and, kind of and fun use though, some yeah. Shells that were drawn by a scientist in the 1800s and put it all together because it's going to take all of our help. Or get Charlie problem. Parker's saxophone and put that in there. That's like, definitely why? in there. That's always usable. And that honestly is the, the message of astronauts. It's like, you know what? It, this is a huge problem. But we, we can take care of it. There's something we can do. Yeah. We got to start working now on this. Um, or we can find another planet. That should be pretty easy. Yeah. And, and getting everyone there. It, get like a couple billion people off the earth and put them in a rocket ship. And no. <laughs> Just not to give too much away, but the perfect planet for book three. Can I tell them? Yeah. Give them a, sne a sneak preview. The perfect planet is Earth. When you think about it, I mean, kind of, of course, right? I mean, I like Earth a lot. Who doesn't? The water planet sounds kind of soggy. <laughs> well, the way we do the astronaut books is kind of fun. I do the writing. I do. Steven does the illustrating. And we do it all in this spaceship um, where, as you can see behind us, these are important pieces of paper. Yeah. Where every single page we draw and we write the first version of it, and then I put it up on the wall, and then we just keep going around this room. So this is book three that's kind of in this shape right now, and then Stephen does the final paintings. And it's kind of fun, and it's a little unusual in the book world. Uh, more often, like, the writer writes the stuff, sends it out, and then the illustrator will do it on their own, whatever they come Which up with. Which honestly just seems like a horrible way to do it for a graphic novel, because yeah. I want to start drawing and be like, oh, that's a funny thing to do with Alpha Wolf. John, can you make Alpha Wolf say something funny? Or you've written- So that that's what we do kind of chapter by chapter. We say, what's happening here? And then what can we put in dialogue? What can we just show in the picture? Some stuff has no words, which are some of my favorite. Well, I actually like the fold out <laughs> battle. You don't need to say anything for a fold out battle, right? Yeah, no, the thing just goes wild easy. and just goes like, <sighs> let's fight you plants. <laughs> and it's just a bunch of mad action. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's unusual to collaborate that way. It's also unusual to collaborate um, because John lives across the street from me. Yeah, um, he's also my father-in-law, which is <laughs> so it works very it's just smoothly. great all the time. Totally <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> so Stephen has to do whatever I say because it's age before beauty. I think is the same. Thing? Is that how we got the 200 fully illustrated <laughs> yeah. color pages? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, there's 200 <laughs> books. There's a lot of words in here, Stephen. But that really is the fun part, because Stephen and I love books like the Treehouse books. Yeah, but that was the way we looked at first. We love the Treehouse books. We love Dogman. Yeah. We wanted to get that format where they kind of go from graphic novel on Dogman to Treehouse, which is its own form, and go somewhere new with that, yeah. and then bring a lot of science and talk about something that's really important to both of us. And that's a thing you can do with a friend of yours. Like if you're not so crazy about drawing, find a friend who draws. Or if you're not so crazy about writing, or if you're both crazy about both of those things, it still works. Because Stephen and I get to throw ideas back and forth. And then we just kind of think up goofier and goofier stuff where we think like, how good it, would it be if we had like four monsters? Like, we can do four not monsters. 10 monsters. We can do as many. <laughs> and even if you don't think your drawings are, are good enough, which is not true, yeah. you're really good at drawing, I was listening, I collage. There's some things I've realized that an artist like Albrecht Durer is one of the best 
draftsman ever. He drew this tree really well. I'm going to collage with that. Use this tree. And it's a fun way to like, you know, connect history. You go back in time and you take different art from different places and then you can draw over it. It's a fun conversation to have. And all kinds of places love to have you using their stuff now. More and more museums are putting their stuff out and you can find it online. Yeah. We're at our um, website, astronauts.space. We have links to the different places you can yep. go. The Rikes Museum in the Netherlands, the Smithsonian has a huge archive now. Um, the Met in New York has a lot. Yeah. It's just growing, growing, growing. And these are all artworks that have been designated um, open access with no copyright restrictions. So someone like me can do whatever I want with them. And you can too. I'm not that special is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get it out there. But you are pretty special with that nice jacket. Well, but you also have the exact same jacket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. This kind of special. <laughs> Wait, I'm getting a transmission from Command Escape. Yeah. Uh, the elevator is going to start going down and... Oh, we got to go. Oh, it's going. It's been great. Yep. Yeah, really nice, nice to see you guys. See you later. Yep. Astronauts Beep. out. It's starting. Beep. 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 Beep.